Hey everyone, Teo here. In today's video, I am reviewing the Spider X2 Ultra Color Calibrator. In this video, I'll tell you what's the use of a color calibrator so that you can decide whether to get one for yourself and how good this is. The first thing you should know is Data Color actually released two models for the Spider X2 in 2023. This one that I have here is the Spider X2 Ultra which is US $299. The other one is the Spider X2 Elite, which is $269. These two models look the same. And the main difference between these two models is for the Elite, that can work with displays with brightness up to 750 nits. For the Ultra model, this can work with monitors with brightness up to 2000 nits. The hardware for the Elite and Ultra models is the same. So if you want to go for the savings of US $30 now, you can go for the Elite. And in the future, if you want to work with high brightness displays, displays with 750 to 200 nits of brightness, you can choose to buy the software upgrade. So the main reason why I've decided to upgrade from my Spider 5 Pro that I have been using for seven to eight years to this new model is because the previous display calibrator wasn't able to work with OLED displays. And secondly, there's a pretty good trade-in deal here in Singapore for this. All right, let me give you the bottom line up front. If you are a visual content creator, such as a photographer, videographer, graphic designer or a digital artist, having a color calibrator is really useful and this one works really well. So even though this can be considered pricey, in my opinion, it's still worth the money because, well, it's useful and this can last for a very long time. So that's the bottom line. And now on to the full review. So in the box, you will get the color calibrator and there is this USB-C to USB-A adapter and there will be a piece of paper with the serial number which I have actually uh, cut out to paste here on the calibrator itself. Do not lose the serial number. I also have the serial number saved online. If you do not have the serial number, you will not be able to set up the driver software and you will not be able to use this color calibrator. With the previous models, you can connect the color calibrator to your computer and the driver software will detect the serial number from the calibrator. But for these new models, you have to input the serial number manually. So the design of this calibrator looks all right. The build quality is solid. So this is quite a well-made product. And the cable is 1.5 meters long, which is long. This is now using USB-C and there is USB-A as well. This works with Windows and Mac OS. This does not work with iPads and other tablets. So on the back, there is this circular padding that feels like felt. And when you open this, you can see the lens and there is this same felt like padding here as well to prevent scratching your display. And here, there is this tripod mount which measures a quarter inches. The calibration process is straightforward because it's guided step by step. So this is the first page where you can choose to calibrate the display or soft proof to preview the images as they will appear on printers or other mobile devices. So I'm going to calibrate the display. I'm going to click next. And here you can choose to calibrate this particular display or calibrate multiple displays so that the colors will match across various displays. And this is to test your calibration, to test your calibrated display. So I'm just going to calibrate this display and this is where you can choose the various settings. Since I'm using a laptop, I will choose laptop. And this is the default display technology to work with, white LED. And for the display controls, you have to choose the ones that are supported by your display. So for this laptop display, it's just 
brightness. Next, you can choose other calibration settings. At the top left, you can choose to have a full calibration, a recalibration or check the calibration. And here I'm going to set the gamma as 2.2. You can choose the white point. For me, 6500K. You can adjust the brightness if you want to. You can choose um, the room light depending on your work environment. And this is the various color space target. And there is gray balance calibration. And you can measure the ambient light as well. The ambient light is measured with this and I've just measured it and it's very high. Generally speaking, when I'm working on my displays, I usually have my curtains drawn for controlled lighting. And now we can calibrate this. So just put the color calibrator on top and use the back cover as a weight so that this will not move and continue now the calibration process is noticeably faster compared to my previous calibrator the spider 5 pro the calibration process in this case took less than one minute 20 seconds next you can choose to save the color profile and set a reminder for the next calibration and here you can check the before or see the before and after and it's a noticeable difference and this is where you can see the measurements so for this apple macbook pro display the color support is 98% srgb 79% ntsc 79% odb rgb 88% p3 now if you have created color profiles before you can also load the previous profile and compare them like side by side so um, previously it was 100% srgb but today it's 98% srgb and other color spaces are rec 2020 ACES AP1, ACES AP0, Da Vinci. And here there are measurements for the brightness, white point, primaries, RGB, delta E, and gamma. So that's it, very straightforward. And now let me show you why you may want to color calibrate your display. So this is the calibrated display. The white looks white and the colors look all right. And this display looks yellowish because i have purposely made it so if you have been working on such a display for a long time your brain is going to tell you this is white but when you have a color accurate reference beside to compare you can see that this is actually yellowish so now i'm going to use the color calibrator to calibrate this display as well so this display is now going through calibration so after calibration, now the white looks white. And when you compare it to this other display, you can see the colors, they match. So this is very important if you are using multiple displays. It is possible to calibrate your display without a color calibrator. You can do it through the settings from your OS. So earlier, this was how I made the display yellow. The thing is, how do you know this is white if you don't have a color accurate reference to compare to? If this is the only display that you have, how do you know that this is white compared to this or something else? All right, to conclude, this color calibrator works well. The driver is easy to use and the results look great. Now, whether you should buy this really depends on the work that you do and the standards that you set for yourself. So I'm not going to say that this is a must buy, but I would say that this is really useful for visual content creators, especially for those who use multiple displays.